Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about endothermic and exothermic processes. Um, these are um, having to do with energy changes in a system. This is for objective four in unit two. Uh, so let's get out our handy dandy Cornell paper. Alright, so remember you got to fill out your name, class period, and date. And our objective is to for energy and the surroundings. And our essential question is, what is the difference between an endothermic and exothermic process? So we'll start by um, defining these words after we kind of review a little bit of what we talked about already. So in um, objective three, we talked about a heating curve and a cooling curve. And so let's talk about those really fast. Do you remember what a heating curve and ooh, for grins and giggles, we'll make this one blue, right? And a cooling curve, um, what did they look like? And let's say we go through all of the phases. So the heating curve would get warmer and then melt, and then get warmer and then boil, and then get warmer. And a cooling curve would do the opposite. It would get cooler, and then condense, and then get cooler, and then freeze, and then get cooler. Um, Interestingly enough, the freezing point and the melting point are the same. The difference is whether energy is going in or coming out. Um, and we've actually talked about these, um, the idea of what the energy is doing before, but we're going to give it some special names here. So let's uh, scroll down a little bit. Okay, so um, uh, we've got these two words, endothermic and exothermic. And um, you might have noticed from the name of them that um, endo thermic is going to go, I'm going to put it on this side, it's, it, uh, it goes on the heating side, and I'm going to put exothermic over here on the cooling side. So the big way to remember what these means is that exo sounds a lot like exit, and endo sounds a lot like enter. Um, now a lot of people say um, when they when they read exothermic, uh, they, they think of an exoskeleton, which is a skeleton that's on the outside, and so exothermic is energies on the outside. Um, but that's not the right way to talk about it here because this is more of a verb sense than a location sense. Um, so when we're talking about an exothermic process, first uh, we're talking about the energy uh, leaving. Energy leaves. Now it could be taken out, it could be um, leaving because of something else that's taking place, um, but either way the idea is that the energy is leaving and so um, the, the what takes place is cooling or phase changes where we're going from gas to liquid and from liquid to solid. We have to take energy out for those things to take place. Gas, liquid, liquid, solid. Okay. Now, on the other side, the endothermic uh, is pretty much the opposite. Instead of energy leaving, energy um, enters, energy comes in, um, energy is taken in. I don't know how you want to say that. I'm going to write energy enters. Um, and instead of cooling here, we're talking about heating, where we're putting energy into the system, energy is increasing. And the phase changes that goes with is the melting and the boiling. So we've got uh, uh, solid to liquid. That, by the way, is an arrow. And liquid to gas. Those would both be exo, I'm sorry, endothermic processes because we have to add energy in order for these changes to take place. So uh, so let's think about it in terms of the energy for just a minute. When it comes to the phase energy, we're taking energy out when we are making those attractions. I'm going to flip to the next page so we can jot this down. Okay, so we were going to talk about uh, phase energy and, um, and thermal energy here. So we've got endo and exothermic. I'm just going to write it like that because I'm feeling a little lazy today. Maybe you are too. 
And then we've got um, phase energy and thermal energy. Okay, so um, so the easy one is the endo and the exo when it comes to thermal energy. So let's fill that part out first. So with our thermal energy, when energy is coming in, remember this is in, uh, well, no, I'm not writing it in, I'm going to write uh, enter and exit because I don't want you to think it's on the inside and the outside because that's not how it works. Okay, so when we think about energy coming in with thermal energy, this is heating up, the temperature goes up. And when we talk about energy exiting, uh, thermal energy, the temperature is going to go down. Now, with the phase energy, it's a little bit different because it's not about the temperature. Remember, the temperature doesn't change when phase energy changes. Mm -hmm. What's happening is uh, we're breaking attractions when we have an endothermic process where we're tearing up those those uh, attractions were karate chopping so that those uh, those solid particles can turn into liquid particles and so those liquid particles can turn into a gas. When we do, uh, when we have an exothermic process, we're forming those attractions instead of breaking them. So it's the opposite there. But remember, the temperature isn't changing, even though it's uh, even though we're we're changing energy, we're changing a different kind of energy. Um, so it might be useful to note here that this is where the phase changes and this is where the temperature changes and you don't have them happen at the same time. You're either changing phase or you're changing temperature, but not both. Okay, so um, if you have any questions about endothermic or exothermic processes, um, you can ask your teacher. Uh, thanks for watching.